Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Tirso. One of you left a very honest comment on one of my videos asking about my workflow. It's not a silly question at all. It just never crossed my mind that this might actually be helpful to cover. I'm always talking about process on the channel, but there are two. You have your creative design process, but also your technical workflow, which is how you build your files, organize versions, move between apps, and even archiving. I will say I don't love the word professional. I think workflow leans more on craft than it does anything else. Some designers are more meticulous, but that doesn't mean that others don't produce at the same level. So when we say professional, I think it should be interpreted that your process, no matter how chaotic we are creatives after all, produces consistent results and hopefully sets you up to work faster and smarter. I'd like to think that I'm pretty organized. I'm definitely the designer that labels or layers in Photoshop, but that just works for me. So take what's useful from this video. Here is a look at my graphic design workflow. For print projects, I usually have folders for layouts, assets, exports, and final. The final folder has any print ready PDFs, client deliverables, and a final package folder. Layouts and exports both have a nested folder called Z underscore old. Sometimes there are just too many versions, so I drop them in here. You rarely have a project that starts with Z, so this keeps it at the bottom. In assets, I keep images, vectors, and copy. I also have a folder labeled from client. The asterisk at the beginning keeps it at the top for easy access. I mostly design websites these days. I haven't worked on an app in a while. My structure is a little simpler, just assets, exports, and final. A layouts folder isn't necessary because everything is in Figma. And then of course I have a folder for YouTube. Same logic, but a lot more files to work with. I have files, media, and final. In files, I separate Premiere, After Effects, and InDesign. Design is for both PSD and InDesign, depending. This seems pretty nested, but I'm usually working on them independently, so it hasn't been a problem. In media, I keep video B-roll, audio for voiceover and music. I separated photos and graphics. I don't always use both, but sometimes I do. Final is for the end card, the thumbnail, final video, and collected Premiere profiles. And that is my folder system. Before I start anything, I gather all of my assets. These were for photos I used for the hierarchy and emphasis video. Just to be clear, what I show you in my videos explains my thinking, but it isn't actually my design process. So I like using Bridge because I can see all the assets much easier than searching for file names. I had already predetermined that I wanted the photography to have noise because the concept dealt with sustainability and raw ingredients. For that, I added noise to the photos that needed it. So let's just do that real quick. Bringing this one into Photoshop and adding some noise. I'm also saving this as a PSD, which I will explain later. I'll need to add noise to the rest of the photos. For this image, we're talking about sustainability. Grapes aren't sustainable, so I swapped them with strawberries. This picture also looked odd, so I removed it. Now that all the assets are prepped, designing will be so much easier. This will be print, so I'll be working in InDesign. Our setting is print, one page is fine. Facing pages should be checked since I'm designing in spreads. My page size is eight and a quarter inches by 10.875 inches. In a perfect world, I should be using pikas, but again, people work differently. Margins are okay as is, and then my bleed size is an eighth of an inch. So that's a setup. When I'm in InDesign, I use a custom workspace that I created over the years. It's based off of the Essentials workspace, but I removed and added panels that I consistently use. There isn't a single second I waste looking for panels when I'm designing, so I highly suggest you also create your own workspace. There might be a way to automate these next steps, but I just do it manually. In Preferences, under Units and Increments, I always set my kerning to 1. Second, I go to the Pages panel and make sure Document Pages and Select Spreads to Shuffle are both checked off. I'm only working on a spread, not a report or a full magazine, so I don't think it's necessary to set up any parent pages. 
Then I set up my grid. If you've seen my grid videos, you know I almost exclusively work in seven columns. As you've seen on the channel, I like to explore a lot of options. So here is how I typically do that. My approach for laying things out is to typically anchor the page towards the headline treatment or an image. For this, we have one hero image. If I place it fairly large at the bottom, that gives me room for text above it. I can see that the background is light enough for the text to run on top, so I would just extend the background above. Since we're designing spreads, I can also do a version where the hero crosses over into the other page and the photo can get much larger. And last, I can do a version where the hero image takes up the entire spread. For each of these, I can work on some type explorations. Here are a few I did for the first version and I'm just gonna drop the ones that I like. Because the layout changed for the other two versions, I also do type explorations for them, but they are different from the first one. From there, I go through the options and decide which ones I'd like to pursue designing the rest of the layout. Let's say here's one option and here's another. I don't need to build a different layout for the rest. I can just drop in the different type treatments. This looks like a lot, but really it's a lot of copy and paste and moving elements around in the different versions. I like to be prolific because I think it forces me to not have any preconceived notions on what the final design should look like. So here are all the options for the three different versions. Now we can do options all day, but how do you know when to stop exploring? My answer is when you're happy with the design. You have to show this to someone at some point, whether that's your boss or a client. If you feel like you have enough options that you can present confidently, then stop exploring. Going back to workflow, I don't like to delete anything until the end. I usually drop a blank spread and move the versions I like at the top of my file. If it gets too junky, I can clean up the file with the latest designs and just save a new version. I also wanna mention that when I'm working, I really love a clean file. If I have images that go to bleed, I make sure they're set as I'm designing. The same goes for alignment, closing text boxes, and even having all my swatches in CMYK. I don't like to save those things for the end. This is simply a trauma response for forgetting to do them in the past. Like I said, other designers probably do this differently. Since this is my channel, I just wanna demonstrate what my standards are. When working between apps, I try to be as seamless as possible. Since we're in InDesign, we're looking at Adobe Photoshop for images and Adobe Illustrator for vectors. In the beginning, you saw that I changed all of the JPEGs to PSDs. If I go into my file, granted that I did this before designing, let's just pretend that I didn't. If I'm in InDesign and I need to edit this photo, I would right click, which is command click, go to edit and then Photoshop. This is where file type matters. If you're working with a JPEG, you're not able to work in layers, meaning if I add a layer, I then have to save this as a PSD. When you go back to InDesign, you'll have to fully replace the image. This was a PSD that I changed earlier. I'll right click and go to Photoshop. Maybe I want to brighten the image slightly. I can add a curves adjustment layer. I just have to click save and when I go back to InDesign, it automatically updates and I don't have to replace any files. When it comes to Adobe Illustrator, maybe you have a logo from a client. You can certainly place the AI or EPS directly into InDesign. Another option, which I commonly do, is to open the file in Illustrator, copy it and paste it directly into InDesign. This allows me to work without a link and now I can change the color directly in InDesign without needing a different file for every color option. I mean, you can really just do it on the side for easy access. I don't think this takes that much extra time, but it does leave my file cleaner and my workflow faster. I don't know a single designer where you export one file and the project is done. I keep track of all my versioning at the end of the file name. A client can't lie to me and say that we're on round one when it's really round three. I obviously keep my exports in the exports folder. For the last version, I use underscore final or whatever number you're on because sometimes it's final six or final 37, who knows. To archive the project, I create a packaged file. In InDesign, the shortcut is command option P. The folder has the final InDesign file, an IDML, which is for when you have an older version, but 
You probably don't need that since everything is cloud-based. It does export a high-res PDF. I think the default is single pages, so I usually export my own high-res PDF just to make sure. On top of that, I also export a high-res JPEG because when I'm grabbing assets for my portfolio later on, JPEGs work in both InDesign and Figma. It also has a folder for all the fonts used in the file. If you use Adobe fonts, it won't package them because you don't have the physical files. Last, there is a folder of links which has the images you use in the final layout. However, it does not include any images on your pasteboard. So that's my workflow. Hopefully that gave you some ideas to consider in your own design process. I am always open to addressing the content you're curious about, so drop a comment below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.